I get a bunch of uh, Instagram pages. I've always had a bunch for different things. Um, and I used to run a couple band ones that I just got tired of doing. And uh, I, I noticed that there wasn't many or, or really any uh, dedicated uh, killing joke pages. And um, I like to do uh, photo art. It's just fun. I have a few different programs that I use. And um, I haven't done a lot of it lately. So I figured I would uh, get two birds stoned at once and create a killing joke page that I could do uh, some photo art with. If you're interested in checking it out, if you're a fan of the band or whatever, this is it. Um, it used to have a cooler name. It was Incentheria. Incentheria. Uh, but um, it was, uh, how would you find, how would you know there was a killing joke page? How would you find that? So I had to put something, um, so if someone searched for it, they'd be able to find it. There would, so there'd be, some, there'd be some connection to it. You know what I mean? At least that guy, the way that guy just went for that bag, I don't know if you saw that, but he walked, he was walking by and he kind of lurched over when he saw her bending over as if he was going to grab that bag. Yeah. Off the, off the look at the fucking movie, film, the fucking, I'm already swearing. Off the look at the, the video, but that's what it looked like to me. He's dressed like a glowy. You know what I mean? I don't know, whatever. You see that though, like I, I noticed that when you see certain guys, certain creeds, uh, you're watching them, they don't know you're watching them. And like they'll walk by someone and they always look at the person's bags or what they have, you know, I see it. Anyway, let me get back on, on track here. So uh, yeah, I've been, um, I've done some videos on, on Killing Joke here in my ongoing, um, my ongoing uh, Jazz Coleman, uh, contradictory feelings about him he's a brilliant guy and um he's just the best to listen to like if you ever uh come across any interviews with him or, or i would indeed say it's she should seek some out online the problem is uh the people that interview him are always uh music people music journalists so uh I said something recently to the effect uh, on a comment section where it's like jazz will be going on about, uh, you know, the Rosicrucian Negregor and, you know, the impossibility of it being a, a spoof on occultism by a, a group of German teenagers and how preposterous that would be. And then the next question is, uh, yeah, so you guys did Bloodsock last year. Were there any bands you wanted to see? <laughs> He'll talk about pe people don't know what, what he's saying, so they don't know what to ask him. Uh, it kills me too, because he'll bring up how him and Paul used to live with some Tavistock Institute guys. And he'll bring that up, and then like, the interviewer won't know what the fuck that means, and they'll just be like, oh, okay, and they'll just brush by it. But uh, I've been trying to get more information on these people they lived with. Now my, now, my understanding was, when I first started hearing about this, that they lived with uh, guys who worked for the Tavistock Institute, as well as some of the government think tanks, uh, social scapers. Tavistock is the people that uh, created the hippie movement and the counterculture at the time. And then they created the... Uh, and then they created the... Um, hold on, I'll just be quiet for a minute. Oh wow, they actually have women up there. That's nice. The last time I was here, they were doing like a hula thing, right? And I uh, came to sit down to watch it. And I got a nice seat, and I start filming it, and it's a hula uh, uh, thing. They're doing a, they're just singing a song, and uh, it was called Dainty Cheeks, which was weird when you hear what I'm about to say. They, um, they were just hula boys. Guys, uh, greased up, young men, uh, dancing with the grass hula skirts on to Dainty Cheeks. And, um, it, I was just disturbed. <laughs> I'm like, nope. I got up and walked away. Now, I, I think the reason is because they can't have... Like, those girls there were fully dressed, and it wasn't like a hula thing, really. 
I think now it, they wouldn't be able to do it because uh, the idea of a girl in the bikini top is the patriarchy. So instead, uh, they put fucking two guys with their ham hock shake and it was fucking disgusting. Again, whatever you're into, you're into. But uh, I don't know, I was just shocked. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> it's in one of the videos. Uh, it's, it's funny if you, if you were there that day. It's funny now, I wasn't funny then. Hey, Rooster Man. So, um, getting back to Killing Joke. What's up, buddy? You like Killing Joke? Is there, oh, the, the comic book? No. No, not the comic book. Can you imagine that? Alan Moore, right? He's a British guy. Like, he knows who they are. He knows them. He runs in some of the same circles. Like, he was friends with David J., who was that whole little crew there uh, at the end of the 70s that, that became the sort of post-punk crew. A lot of them went to mysticism and magic and stuff. Um, and a lot of my friends, I don't know how friendly Alan Moore is with them, or if he is at all. But I know he's friendly with the Bauhaus guys. But then again, I don't know how friendly they are with Killing Joke. The fucking point is, he kind of, uh, he recontextualized that term in uh, modern pop culture to when you hear it, all you think of is bat fucking Batman. That kind of sucks. But I mean, I don't know. You could have, even if they, I'm sure they, they trademarked the name, but the way uh, trademark law works uh, in some areas is, you can make a band called uh, Playboy, but you can't make a magazine called Playboy. There's already a magazine called Playboy. That's how it was explained to me. But at, but at the same time, um, I can't imagine someone being able to make a, a band called McDonald's, right? You wouldn't be able to do that. So I don't know what happened there, but it's like, so when you type those terms in, all you get is fucking Batman and shit. And that story, the actual story is not good. I don't like it. I, I, I don't think... It deserves all the reverence it gets. It's really dark. It's really uh, unnecessarily violent over the top. And uh, there's a, a sexual kind of sadism. I don't want to get into that story, but it's it's gross. It, I don't like it. It's not good. And um, it just kind of sucks that anytime you hear that term, it's like you just, you just fucking think it's over. But anyway, long fucking way all around story short. Tavistock, okay, these Tavistock dudes they were living with. I was imagining, I was thinking, what are these like poor kids who were telling Joe were kind of, uh, they were squatting in different places. Um, I don't know exactly where they live with the Tavistock guys or some kind of flat. But whatever the, whatever the case, right, I'm thinking, why are these hoity-toity Tavistock types, um, these intellectuals, living with fucking jazz and these other maniacs? Uh, and then come to find out, the guys working, these Tavistock individuals that were working for the think tanks in the government, were fucking crazy people. Uh, like, they were on acid 24-7. They were like, uh, they, one of them was called Dave the Wizard. I don't know if he exactly was one of the Tavistock guys. But um, he was a cannibal. So they were all these, like, creeps, you know? But they were working for the government to try to figure out like um, social programming, social social shaping, you know? Uh, and, that, and that's frightening. Um, they were saying that a, a Paul Ferguson interview I saw about one of these dudes was like, they were they were on the, on the edge of, um, of insanity. They had taken so much LSD. Uh, and these guys were working for the government to come up with ideas on how to, you know, help the government farm its cattle better, you know, which is basically what, what it's all about. But, uh, yeah, I was I was looking the wrong way. I, I was thinking, why would they be with these, you know, these um, intellectuals, these hoity-toity guys, and they weren't. They were like, like street people, I guess, from what I understand. Uh, but they were working for the government to help, you know, and, and, and it's not a huge surprise when you see the insanity that we live in now but uh it's hard you know i don't think it's like they're not willing to talk about it it's just people don't know what to ask them and i read uh the are you receiving book um but i didn't really get much out of that also now jazz has his own book i fucking keep forgetting that i, sh I should just buy that off amazon because you can't get it anywhere 
Um, but I think it's available on Amazon. It was out of print for a while. Then it came back in print. The thing is, I don't use uh, I don't use credit cards. If I want to buy something online, I usually buy like a Google Play card, and then I make purchases that way. So fuck it, I I am only always thinking of it like times like now. Oh, I'm at home. But I do want to read that that book, uh, his uh, biography, uh, the island, or is it music from the island? Or I know he had a. A companion CD. No, no. The CD is called The Island. What he did is he did some, um, he did some, comp some, uh, some composing that went along with the book, you know? Uh, but I don't know if he goes into it there anymore about it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I would love to, to ask those guys about. The, the, the thing is, you have to kind of, like, I'll always seek out an interview. And I, I just take whatever I can get from what they say, but no one never asks them the right questions. Like they're always asking them who's your, who's your favorite band, you know, or something like that. Like they don't know what to ask them. And it's not their fault. A music journalist doesn't know about that shit. Not many people know about that shit. So I kind of have to go through their stuff and kind of glean what I can from them. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I started that pages for fun. I, I should, um, I like doing videos about them. I haven't done one in a while. I wanted to do the uh, kind of review their albums. Cause they're all great. Uh, people, you know, complain about a couple of them. They complain about Outside the Gate. Uh, I like Outside the Gate. I think it's uh, it's different, but all their shit's different. I mean, I don't know. I I think uh, I think that gets a bad rap. I look at brighter than a thousand suns, right? That was a failure on an industry level. I don't know how the record company fucked that one up. Like they gave them everything they wanted after the uh, the success of like Nighttime and that hit single with Love Like Blood. Uh, that at the time was their biggest album. It kind of set them up to uh, to move on to the next level, and they delivered them something that was definitely palatable, 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 palatable for radio. And it was almost like, a, and I don't, I hate to use this band as a, uh, but it was almost like a, a U2 kind of thing, uh, very uh, atmospheric and almost like an unforgettable fire. It kept it way cooler. Uh, it was still killing joke. You could tell uh, the kind of notes they would choose, the 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 music they would pick, like how they compose the songs, were still done in their style. But they were a lot more like radio friendly. One of the big mistakes they made, which they they fixed years later, carrying a bag of Ajax bleach, and it's just awkward. The um. Had to get rid of some bodies. The, uh... What the fuck was I saying? See, I must have passed through a doorway. <laughs> I must have passed through a portal. But, um... Hold on, let me just get through all these people. Sometimes I get interference. When you, when you go walk near, like, a group of people, they're all giving off their own sort of thing. Their own energy, their own frequencies, their own Wi-Fi. That's why the fucking bus for me is just a non-starter. Oh, it's such a pain in the ass. That's how I went to Chinatown. Uh, I did fine until the way home. I was like, I gotta get off the next stop. I gotta get off the next I gotta walk the rest of it. I can't do it. Yeah, it becomes really, really overwhelming. But, um, yeah, that Brother and a Thousand Sons, they, they gave the record company the perfect uh, album. And, like, they didn't uh, it's not the band's fault in that case. Now, yeah, the fan base was a little bit like, well, this is a little lightweight, but so what? You can, it was still killing joke. You can still push it. There's no sanity. Yeah, I think Adorations was the wrong thing to lead off with. Um, it was atmospheric, but it didn't have, like, a big hook in it. 
sanity would have been a way better thing to start off with though as cheesy as it is a little bit victory i don't know for first single but that would have made a good single too like almost any song you could kind of make a case for uh but adoration's as good as it is it didn't uh it didn't have any earworms in it nothing that was gonna stick in your head had a nice atmosphere it sounded good jazz sings on that whole album uh, it's one of the few albums that he, he sings on in what would be today considered like clean singing uh, instead of the, the growling kind of thing. I like both. I like both. And the fact that he can still do both, he can jump from one to the other, a pedal bus. I think it's a pedal bus, is it? It's, I'm not saying the people on it are, are pedos, but this bus has the pedal symbol, as you see, uh, very prominently. Um, yeah, I feel bad for guys like that. The thing is, like, you want to help sometimes, but sometimes you try to help and they freak out on you. So it's like, you got to be careful with that. got to be careful. <laughs> My wife did that the other day. She was trying to bring breakfast to some guy. She felt bad. She came out here in the morning. So she bought breakfast for him, brought it to him, and he started screaming at her, Get that the fuck away from me! She's like, are you sure? I don't want it! She says, no, I had all this food. I guess she just left it on the garbage trail. Uh, then I'm like, honey... You've got to be smarter than that, you know. That's the thing. Um, a lot of them are like that. And what are you going to do? I don't know. Whatever. I like to try to get to know them first. Like I was talking to one of my guys the other night. He's a pseudo kind of informant. But the thing is, I think he's actually a, a spook. I think he's actually a glowy. But that's a whole other story. It has nothing to do with killing Joe. But those guys, they see everything. And he started talking to me about it. He's like, you know, things have been really strange around here. I'm like, well, you know, what do you mean? Like, There's a lot of new people here. Uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, I started telling him about uh, my thing. But he was kind of, I wasn't, I was coming at it from the, uh, you know, the large change in demographics that we've seen. But he was like kind of alluding to some kind of darker, mysterious kind of uh, thing. So uh, we, we started talking about demons and you know demonic influence and demonic uh how it's been growing and he wasn't really giving me nothing on that so i let him talk a little bit but i, I couldn't figure out what he was trying to say he was just trying to say there's something there's something here there's something uh has changed in this area and he sees it but he couldn't really describe what it is and he's one of the more like um with it guys like he's not you can have a conversation with him some of these guys you can and um yeah i, I used to have a, a a bunch of them that were like informants for uh for demon stuff you know for uh black magic energy fucking bad guys shit you know whatever you want to call it uh because they see it all and and the and the thing is is they see a lot of the trade too um the, tr the trade in parentheses because what happens is people don't see them as real people so if they're doing something they shouldn't be doing if there's a homeless guy there they don't think twice they just keep doing it because he's like invisible to them but they see it you know and uh you know they see everything so yeah i don't i don't have a I don't have the network I used to have though because there the the overturn in personnel it's like Kmart now it's like the they just, new ones come in and new, and old ones go all the time um, so whatever but yeah anyway I'm gonna wrap this up if you want to uh, check that out that killing joke thing if you're a killing joke fan if you're a gatherer yourself or and if you make art if you do any anything uh, that's killing joke related or uh, have anything to contribute you can always email me there or leave a comment there or contact me here, whatever the fuck you want to do. There's many ways to get me. I mean, not get me, get me. You're never going to get me. Don't blame the teacher. Blame the school.